Good morning. How good it is, as always, to be together in a spirit of worship, enjoying the beauty of this place. It looks a little different in here than it did last week, right? Yeah, it looks beautiful. Our um, sanctuary and building has been adorned uh, as we enter into the Advent season. It's hard to believe we are already here, um, but with great joy we enter in. It is wonderful to have each and every one of you here with us this morning, as always, but I want to extend a special welcome to those who might be visiting with us, and in particular those who are here for the first time. If this is your first time worshiping with us here at St. John's, welcome. There is a card in front of you in your pew rack to fill out, just asking for a name and some contact info so we can be in touch with you in the days ahead to say thank you for being with us this morning. And of course, you can reach out to us at any time. Um, but I trust that all of you know whether this is your first time worshiping here or you've been here way more than one time, um, that no matter who you are and no matter where you are on life's journey, it is our deep desire to meet you where you are and most importantly, to share God's love with you. So welcome. The order of things today is a little bit different, um, so I'm going to be sharing some of our joys and concerns um, after I share our announcements and as we transition into our worship this morning. Since the back half of our service is pretty full, we've got a lot going on, but we do want to take time to mention the joys and concerns. But first, a few announcements to make sure that we get on our radar. As you know, if you've been here in uh, weeks leading up to this, there's a lot happening in the life of our church um, in the next couple of weeks as we approach Christmas. So there's a lot to pay attention to. Um, we've done our best to make sure that it's in writing, which I always find helpful. So in your bulletins in the back, there are announcements regarding things like the soup sale that's upcoming uh, next Sunday. And the making of that soup will, I believe, happen on Friday. Um, if you have any questions about that, please contact Ann Kinsey. Uh, next Sunday, also after our service, in addition to heading downstairs to purchase some soup, you can also enjoy an Advent celebration uh, that the Board of Educators will be hosting um, downstairs in Assembly Hall. There's also a, an awesome volunteer opportunity with a um, mission called Wrapping Presents. There's a lot to read about in your bulletin if you're interested in taking advantage of that opportunity. And then, of course, we have the infamous list of things um, happening in the Advent and Christmas season here at St. John's. Good to read through that and put it on your fridge um, to remember all that's upcoming. And I do want to pay special attention to this insert, which might look familiar from last year. We are once again having a service of Longest Night happening on Wednesday evening, December 20th as we honor the grief, the sadness, some of the complicated feelings that accompany the joy of the Christmas season. So please pay attention to that as well upcoming. I believe those are all of the announcements this morning, which I will leave some of them to your reading later today. Oh, let me address the ones that are actually written in the book. Like the budget hearing, thank you, Grace. <laughs> Um, a reminder, a budget hearing will be held after the service today in Assembly Hall. So after our service this morning, you can head downstairs. There will be typical fellowship time and then a budget hearing happening in that same room. A vote on that budget that the hearing um, is addressing today will be held next Sunday at the beginning of the worship service. So hearing today, vote next Sunday. Thank you, Grace. Also, we do want to thank everyone who came out yesterday to help decorate the church. Um, it is done thoughtfully and with great care and intention, and um, I was here to witness it uh, after the women's tea, and it was a wonderful thing to behold. Um, so thank you to everyone who makes time to come and adorn our space with beauty for the season. And one um, note about uh, this morning. Um, extra help is needed to pack gifts after the service, um, so if you are able and willing, head forward after our service is over to help pack. Um, 
We have tuba Christmas here later today, and as soon as we are done and vacate the presents, they will be coming in. So the faster that we can get those gifts um, sorted and packed up, the better, um, so that our friends can move in and begin their um, celebration. The weather has pushed them inside, and we're happy to host them, but um, the time will be a little bit tight, so um, any extra hands would be greatly appreciated. Okay, now I think those are all of the announcements for this morning. But I do want to draw your attention to some joys and concerns that have been lifted up this morning. Our first joy, I was thrilled to learn this morning, um, at the birth of Emily June, who is the daughter of Danny and Joe Barker, granddaughter of Terry and Frank Slover, great-granddaughter of Jim and Judy Lederach. So another great-grandchild for Jim and Judy, a wonderful, um, a wonderful present for the season, right? And a few concerns to lift up this morning. We keep in our prayers the family and friends of Kim Day, who passed away on Wednesday at St. Mary's Manor after a courageous battle with cancer. Kim was a dear friend of Alan Malachowski. We want to keep Don Hunsinger in our prayers, who was admitted to Doylestown Hospital this past week for walking pneumonia. So please keep Don and Lynn and their children and family members in our prayers. We want to pray for the family of Gemma Davis, one month old baby girl with a rare condition and cancer. She's at CHOP. She and her family are close friends of the Salmon family. So please keep um, Gemma in your prayers. And also Kim Sands has asked for prayers for a coworker and friend, Barb Pester, who had a stroke this week. So lots of people, lots of situations, names and faces to keep in our prayers as we enter into a time of worship, as we enter into this season. I wanna just take a deep breath and um, hold some space for those prayers before we begin our worship. So I want to invite you to join me as we inhale and breathe in God's spirit that surrounds us and exhale and set aside all the things that are busying our hearts and minds, all the many moving parts. And we hold in our prayers, O oh God, all those in need of prayer, thinking especially of Emily and her family, Danny and Joe. We think of Kim's beloved ones, Don and Lynn, Gemma and her family, and Barb. And God, as we enter into this festive and love-filled worship service, may you be present in the midst of it. Amen. I invite you to stand and join me as we enter into worship by uh, saying together our call to worship. Without love, we have nothing. To love God, to love God's creation, to love the people God made each and all of us to be, this is our purpose as people of faith. As Advent, the season of waiting begins, we wait for love by practicing it, and by making space for the love we know is coming. We seek to love and be known as people of love, offering a light in the darkness of judgment, loneliness, and fear. We are choosing to center our lives around the light of love. We light the candle of love today to symbolize the love that created us, the love we seek to share with the world, the love that guides us through this season and the love that we long for as we anticipate the birth of Christ. Amen. Let us join together as we confess our sins by praying our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Loving God, many of us have come to church today with gifts in hand, eagerly ready to share. We have a vision of our chancel full of thoughtfully purchased presents, and what a vision it is. What we tend to lose sight of, however, are the other kinds of gifts that we are called to hold in our hands and our hearts in this season of Advent. The gifts of love, hope, joy, and peace. 
In a season where there is so much to look at, it's hard to focus on the vision it takes to make our hearts full and ready for the coming of your Son. On this day of generous giving, may Christ's gift of love be the most important one that we share as we help to make the world ready for Christmas. Amen. Friends, when we confess our sins, when we claim our short-sightedness and our tunnel vision and ask for God's vision to guide us, God does indeed open our eyes and our hearts with the power of forgiveness and grace. May we claim these precious gifts this day, and may they be among the many that we share with others this day, this season, and always. Amen. You may be seated.
Good morning, and welcome to this first Sunday of Advent, Love Gifts Sunday, God incarnate taking place. The American author, pastor, and theologian Frederick Buechner once took it upon himself the task of defining the concept of God's love. He wrote, and I quote, Of all the powers, love is the most powerful and the most powerless. It is the most powerful because it alone can conquer that final and most impregnable stronghold that is the human heart. It is the most powerless because it can do nothing except by consent. During our weekly Bible study this past Wednesday, we focused on the scripture that you will hear shortly, a story that will be all too familiar to you. The angel Gabriel comes to Mary and announces that she will be carrying a baby, and not just any baby, God's baby, the Word made flesh. God's own Son. Why come as a baby born to a mother without any pedigree? No privilege. No social or political power. Why does God's entrance into human life happen this way? Why not appear as a full-grown, dazzling monarch, demonstrating absolute power, invincibility, and might? I'll tell you why I think God came as a baby. I think it was because of love. Love is the most powerful force in the world, and it is also the most powerless. Mary knew in her heart that the only thing that separated love as powerful and love as powerless was consent, choice. God chose vulnerability, chose humility. God chose taking a risk. Because love is all of those things, vulnerability, humility, and risk. To think that God would entrust the living, breathing, word made flesh, child of God named Jesus, to a woman named Mary, a person of such lowly status, is unprecedented and extremely risky. God is always taking risks. God is always arriving, first in Mary's heart and later in each of ours through our acceptance. Let it be with me according to your word was Mary's acceptance. Not passivity. Not helplessness. Acceptance. It was acceptance. Later, as we bring forward the gifts we are longing to share with people we do not know, 
We do so not through obligation, not through guilt, not through a sense of being powerful. No, we do it because we believe that love is the most powerful force in the world. And we bring these gifts with humility. We bring these gifts believing that if God can inhabit the world of suffering, danger, and turmoil as a baby, then we too can bring compassion, generosity, and connection to a world that is desperate to know what love is. That's what this Sunday, Love Sunday, and every day is really about. Amen. As Reverend Dale mentioned, our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
In just a moment, the choir will sing the familiar words of Silent Night. Now, Silent Night is without a doubt one of the most well-known, beloved, and moving songs, lullabies, really, that fill this special season. But it does always make me wonder. You see, we're never really told that the night Jesus was born was silent. In fact, I imagine it wasn't at all. I imagine that the night of Christ's birth was anything but quiet. First of all, childbirth is rarely a quiet affair. (laughs) Not to mention newborn infants are usually crying when they're not sleeping. And then, of course, there were the shepherds, who I imagine were talking amongst themselves. Now, I don't know whether sheep and donkeys make noise at night. I'm sure they do. And I'm quite sure that a great company of the heavenly hosts saying glory to God in the highest would fill the countryside with noise. And yet, there is something about a baby that makes us hush. Have you ever noticed that when a baby enters a room or when you get close to a baby, your voice drops low, our tone softens, our mannerisms mellow, we slow down. Now so often our Christmas celebrations are anything but silent, am I right? Whether we're hearing choirs singing joy to the world or the cacophony of the crowds at the mall, or the joyful cries of children tearing into their presence. Christmas, too, is hardly a quiet affair. Yet if we take time to retreat from the commotion, which is what Advent draws us into, if we allow ourselves to consider the mystery of this incarnation, If we imagine what it would have been like to join the shepherds at the manger, then perhaps we will hear, in a new way, the prophet's quiet call. So while Silent Night might not be an accurate account of the events of that night in the stable, it is a reminder to us that it was a holy night. And this is a holy season we are entering into, a season set apart from others. For the first time in history, the holy God was physically present on earth in a tiny, fragile, vulnerable, tender, and mild baby. Love incarnate, taking place right before our eyes. So, We ought to hush our mouths, our lives, our schedules, even just for a moment. Amen.
I want to talk a little bit about where the love that is here today is going. I want to talk about that invisible web of connection between this congregation and the organizations that extend our love. I want to talk about two organizations in particular. And I want to thank Mary Billy, who schooled me <laughs> in the most joyous and generous way. You need to know this about Mary Billy. She keeps all the planets in their orbits. <laughs> The first ministry that I'd like to speak about is Urban Promise. St. John's has been working with Urban Promise in Camden, New Jersey since 2011. Walt and Bonnie Weber introduced this church to the work of Urban Promise. Urban Promise's mission is to equip children and young adults with the skills necessary for academic achievement, life management, spiritual growth, and Christian leadership. Urban Promise serves 700 children and young adults each year. Urban Promise provides after-school programs, summer camps, two private schools, teen job training, and experiential learning. St. John's is providing gifts to their Christmas Promise Store. The Christmas Promise Store will enable parents and guardians to select and wrap the gifts they would like to give to their children. Urban Promise is a network of hope. The second ministry to which we are connected is Old First United Church of Christ in Philadelphia. St. John's first connected with Old First in Philadelphia three years ago. Old First's urban ministry provides assistance to the homeless, mainly men, in Center City. The outreach program serves 45 to 55 people every Saturday. And they do this through the Saturday Cupboard Breakfast Program. The volunteers serve a takeout breakfast along with having their clothing cupboard store open for their, gift, their guests to shop. The breakfast ministry and clothing cupboard helps alleviate food insecurities and provides dignity to the homeless. On this Love Gift Sunday, we honor the ministries of Urban Promise and Old First United Church of Christ.
Well, are we ready? <laughs> Lots of what will happen in the next few minutes will be familiar if you have ever experienced this Sunday with us before, but there will be some new things. So even if you've been to a service like this before, we all need to turn our ears on and pay attention for the next couple of moments as I explain some very important uh, flow and people moving and details uh, before we enter into this joyful and worshipful time of our service. Because this is a Sunday that is filled with love, we thought it would be a wonderful thing to not only offer our gifts of love, but also receive the ultimate gift of love, which is the body and blood of Christ in communion. So we will be sharing in communion in conjunction with bringing our gifts forward. So what that means for you is that you will, as usual, be dismissed by pew by our ushers. Can those two ushers raise your hands? Steph and Jen will dismiss you via the center aisle. You will make your way up your, the center aisle with your gifts in hand, where there will, as usual, be young ones and older ones alike to greet you and accept your gifts they will place them on the table up front you it's best if i move around to explain this you will then um, choose your side based on where you're sitting make your way across the front of the chancel where there will be two stations for communion by intinction in the transept on richardson avenue side and the transept in the library side. There will be three communion servers there, one with a basket of pita bread, one with a basket of gluten-free bread, if that is something you need, and one with a chalice. You can take whichever bread you'd like and dip it in the chalice and receive that gift of communion. You'll then make your way down the aisles, loop back around in, into your seats, much like you have in years past. A few important details to remember. If coming forward is not possible for you for a variety of reasons or it's something you'd not like to do, please rest assured that Reverend Dale is our roving communion server and he is looking for you. So if you need to stay, <laughs> if you need to stay in your seats, please do that. Do not make your way forward if that's not a good choice for you. He will be trying to keep an eye out, but you should also be keeping an eye out for him and maybe wave a hand if you need that. There are a few individually packaged communion elements if you're more comfortable receiving that way. Um, if that's the case, Reverend Dale also has those with him, so you can certainly come through, um, but just remain seated um, to get communion, and he will hook you up that way. Have I forgotten anything? No, I think that's good. Okay, all right. Um, so now for the good part. <laughs> Well, each and every one of us is welcome at this table. It is the table of Jesus Christ. It is the table of love, forgiveness, and grace. It is a table that began when a tiny baby arrived in this world helpless and vulnerable. It began on that day, and it has grown. God becoming human with all the dangers, with all the perils, with all the questions, and so we remember, we remember that even on the night of his betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave God thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And in the same way, after breaking the bread, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks for it and before sharing it with those he loved, he said to them, This is my blood, poured out for you whenever you do this. Do it in remembrance of me. Jesus paused to say grace before sharing the gifts with his disciples, so I want to invite us to do the same. Join me in prayer. Loving God, as the light of love shines upon us on this first Sunday of Advent, we admit it's a little strange to be talking about the end of Christ's life. And yet this joyful feast of the people of God is the source of all love. It is what brings us here today. It is what moves us through this season. It is what guides us through this life. So God, as we bring our gifts forward, as we share in this feast, we ask that you nourish us, body and soul, that we might continue to do this work, to be people of love, hope, joy, and peace, this day, this season, and all the days ahead. Amen. I want to invite right now our communion servers to come forward and receive your elements. At this time, I'm going to invite those who have been asked to help receive gifts to come forward and take your spots. Just grab some space up in the chancel. The first of our gifts that will be brought forward this morning is our Sunday offering. Um, so Gail Linderman has graciously offered to bring that forward. And then once that is forward, our ushers will begin to dismiss you. And I invite you now to come, for all things are now ready.
I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer as we dedicate these gifts and give thanks for our communion. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks today for abundance, the bountiful and joyful feast of the people of God that nourished us body and soul, the bountiful gifts we have brought forward and placed before you in offering, the overwhelming amount of your love that surrounds us. All of these gifts this morning seem small in comparison to the gift of your son Jesus, whose birth we look forward to with great anticipation. But in these gifts, O oh God, may you see our love and our light, our hearts of compassion, faithfulness, and service to you and to your people. God, we pray for all those at Urban Promised and at Old First United Church of Christ, for those who will receive the gifts we have brought this day. May they feel the warmth of God's love and our prayers, not just today, but every day. Bless all of our offerings, O God, those of time and talent, and grant to us the grace and mindfulness to use them in ways that honor you, that spread your love and your light into a world desperately in need of both. All of these things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, the true gift among us this day, and the one who gave us the gift of praying together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this morning, we want to make sure that you take the time to greet one another, welcome one another in the spirit of Christ. You are the bearers of love. 
You are the bearers of peace. You, my brothers, sisters, and siblings, are the bearers of joy. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God give you peace today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.